Hi there. And in this video today, I want to talk to you about combustion, and more specifically, complete combustion, and what exactly that means. Now, in combustion, we take our fuel, and in this case, we're going to talk about coal, seeing that we spoke about coal analysis in our last video. We add air, which contains oxygen, to the oil, to the coal, heat it up, and we have combustion. Now, the first thing I want to add in today's video is that red note on the right hand side. The nitrogen coming in with the air does not partake in the combustion reaction. The nitrogen is an inert gas, and if you react it with oxygen in a normal combustion reaction, it just will not go anywhere. So this reaction will not take place. The nitrogen that we say is taking place in the reaction is the nitrogen bonded in the coal. Thus, the combustibles in the coal, which is the carbon, the hydrogen, the bonded sulfur and bonded nitrogen, reacts with the oxygen in the air coming in to produce water for the hydrogen, CO and CO2 for the carbon, SOx for the sulfur and NOx for the nitrogen. Remember, these will be specified whether it's SO2 or SO or whatever, and some ash for the unburned product. And when we talk about combustion, the order of these reactions is very important. Firstly, the oxygen in will react with all the hydrogen. That is by far the fastest reaction and all the oxygen coming in will be consumed, reacting with the hydrogen to form water. So the fastest or the first reaction. Then typically, the sulfur and the nitrogen is converted secondly into SOx and NOx. Next, the carbon goes to CO. Then lastly, or the fourth reaction, the CO will be converted to CO2. So if we have complete combustion, the hydrogen goes to water, the sulfur goes to SOx, typically SO2, the nitrogen goes to NOx, typically NO2, and the carbon will end up as CO2. If it ends up as CO, we have incomplete combustion. But we'll talk about that a little bit later in one of the next videos. Now let's look at a typical combustion cycle or combustion process. So we have our coal and we can actually make this our fuel going into our burner mixed with air which contains oxygen and we have combustion. The product gas leaving this burner is referred to typically as the flue gas, stack gas or exhaust gas. And the stack gas, flue gas, exhaust gas, whichever one you want to use, will contain all the combustion products and also the unreacted feed material. So it can, can contain hydrocarbons, carbon itself in the form of soot, CO, CO2, water, the sulfur and the nitrogen in the form of SOx and NOx, the nitrogen coming in with the air is N2 and even uncombusted even unreacted oxygen. Now because we have water in this specific stream, we would refer to this as a wet exhaust gas. We can also look at this flue gas on a dry basis, which means we'll have the same components in it, but none of the water. We can also describe this exhaust gas in terms of an all salt analysis. This is an analysis that we get from an all sort piece of equipment or an all sort ana analyzer. You get different types of these, but typically the all sort analyzer does not give us any of the NOx coming from the system and also not any of the water. So it's the same components as before, but without the water and without the NOx. The all sort analyzer was designed to distinguish between the CO, CO2, and oxygen leaving the system. That's what they mainly were used for. But you could also pick up the other elements, components with this analyzer. Lastly, the stack gas could be reported on an S-free basis, which means it's this, typically the same as the all sort analysis, but without any SOx. This typically means that the flue gas would have been put through a scrubber, which will remove the NOx and the SOx and only give us the hydrocarbons that's uncombusted, the carbon that's uncombusted, the CO, CO2, nitrogen and oxygen. Typically, 
only the CO, CO2, N2 and O2. Make sure you understand what every one of these for the exhaust gas mean and when you're given them what has been taken away or out of the exhaust gas by looking at what, what, that, at what came in. The next topic I want to discuss is complete combustion. So what happens in complete combustion to the hydrogen, the sulfur, the nitrogen and the carbon coming in as part of my fuel? So remember, sulfur and nitrogen again attached to the coal in this specific case. Now we know by now that the first reaction that will take place is the hydrogen consuming oxygen to go to water. Next, the sulfur and the nitrogen linked to our fuel will go out as SOx and NOx. And remember, we'll specify whether it's SO2, NO2 or NO or whatever. And then the carbon will go out in the third reaction. But when we talk about complete combustion, it will go out in a specific form only. For complete combustion, the carbon will be completely converted to its combustion product, which is CO2. We will not have any hydrocarbons, any unburned carbon or any CO leaving the system. All the carbon coming in with all the species have, has been converted to CO2. The next topic for discussion is theoretical oxygen or air required. I use oxygen and air interchangeably in examples like these because typically you will not feed pure oxygen to your system. You would feed air to the system containing oxygen which is needed for the combustion. Now back to theoretical O2 needed, required. We almost understand from this that it is a description of what complete combustion in the system would be and not what is really happening in the system. So we must look at all the combustible species and go to complete combustion products. Don't look at the analysis of the exhaust gas or the stack gas or what's come out. You need to think and have an understanding that the system describes the complete combustion, so the theoretical oxygen needed to get there. Thus we need to look at these reactions where all the hydrogen goes to water according to that reaction, where all the sulfur bonded to my fuel goes to SO2, I'm specifying that SO2 in this case, according to that reaction, all the nitrogen goes to NO2, as I'm ex specifying that we're going to form NO2, and then lastly and more, most importantly, the carbon, all of it is converted into CO2. No unburned carbon, no unburned hydrocarbons, and no CO leaving the system. We then add all these up to get to the total oxygen required for all these combustible species entering the system. And that is the theoretical oxygen needed or required to have complete combustion. Not what got out, all the fuel coming in combusted to its complete combustion products. Next, I want to talk about excess air or excess oxygen. Now, as you know from previous chemical reactions, excess means more than what we need. So this is based on the theoretical oxygen required. So this is the total amount of oxygen or air in, more than what is theoretically needed. So it's a higher amount, larger amount of oxygen or air put into the system. Typically we do this to get complete combustion, as if we use the exact amount of oxygen, we have a very good chance of not combusting all the carbon. So excess air, excess oxygen, the higher amount of oxygen fed to the system to try and get to complete combustion, higher than the theoretical value needed. Lastly, I want to talk about combustible carbon. Now combustible carbon is exactly what the word says. It's the carbon that we can combust. So let's look at this example. Say we're feeding carbon in my coal, some CO and some CO2 to my burner. I react this with oxygen and air. And what do I get as a combustible product? CO2. Now we can see that the C is converted with the oxygen to CO2 and that the CO is converted with oxygen into CO2 as well. But the CO2 in will not react with the oxygen because it's already in the form of CO2 and it's not converted at all. 
there's no, thus there's no change in the CO2 coming in, which means it is not combusting. Therefore, the only combustible species in this example is the CO, or the C, and if we would have had hydrocarbons, which we didn't have in this example. So those are the combustible carbon species, with the CO2 not being combustible. It will not consume oxygen to go to the combustion products. I hope this video helped with combustion and complete combustion and more, to be more specific. Next time, we'll I'll have a video with a proper example on combustion. I will make the video on complete combustion first and then one to describe incomplete combustion. See you next time.